Yes, especially if the assumption is that Rhaegar killed Robert at the Trident and won the day. But some things would need to happen. Get the Mad King out of the way. He is bonkers and I could see Rhaegar getting the lords to consent to having the Mad King exiled to Dragonstone where he could be mad without hurting the kingdom. Rhaegar is named Regent. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe and also click on the notification bell to remain updated. Rhaegar will need to come to terms with House Martell, especially since they will see things as their daughter and sister is being cast aside. One way is to make clear that Elias' children are still royals and their son is still the heir apparent. He now has John as the spare. Elia can chose to stay at the Red Keep or go home. While the kids would have to stay with Rhaegar, her access to them will not be blocked. With all of that, there is no need for John to be hidden. Rhaegar can raise him and possibly have Ned foster him when he is old enough. Here's another scenario. Suppose that Rhaegar defeats Robert Baratheon in single combat. But what else changes and what else stays the same? Well, let's assume that Jaime Lannister still kills Aerys the Mad King. And when Rhaegar defeats Robert, suppose it results in a temporary truce. With Aerys dead, Robert dead, Rayla and Lyanna's death a foregone conclusion, here's what could happen. Rhaegar trucks out the High Septon who granted him the annulment with his wife Elia, and the one who married him and Lyanna. Rhaegar also goes to the Tower of Joy, with Ned Stark, and Ned hears Lyanna's deathbed confession. Just in case y'all forgot, Rayla, Rhaegar's mother, gives birth to Daenerys, but dies. The big unknown is do the Lannisters still enter the Red Keep, murder Elia Martell, and her children, or not? Let's put this one on the shelf for a moment. So there's a real pickle here. The causes of the rebellion are no more. It wasn't just Rhaegar's kidnapping of Lyanna, but Aerys' summary execution of Brandon and Ricard Stark. But the slate could be wiped clean by a new king. Rhaegar was popular and not at all like his father. But the rebels held the high ground here, and were likely to win if not for a temporary truce. So the best case scenario for Rhaegar goes like this. The other lords accept Rhaegar as king, provided that he makes the appropriate apologies and sets up some alliances to smooth things over. The armies all withdraw. Jaime Lannister, despite having done the right thing, is executed. I don't see enough influence here to send him to the wall. This is very much to the disappointment of Tywin Lannister, who loses his preferred son and heir. Rhaegar's newborn son Aegon, aka Jon Snow, is legitimate. But to prevent friction with the Dornish, his previous children Rhaenys and Aegon remain legitimate. His annulment with Elia Martell remains valid and she likely returns to Dorne, without her children. Jon is raised by the court. John Arryn, one of the key players in the rebellion, is still named Hand of the King, to foster an alliance and to apologize for Aerys' sins. He still marries Lysa Arryn. While Queen Rayla dies, Viserys and Daenerys survive and are raised in King's Landing. Ned Stark goes back to Winterfell and raises his family much like he did before. With Aerys dead, justice has been done, and perhaps in the interest of the end of bloodshed, a truce is settled. Stannis Baratheon is old enough to become Lord of the Stormlands. Could Elia Martell and Rhaegar remarry? Would they? So who remains unhappy? Well, Tywin Lannister for one. His very marriageable daughter Cersei has lost her lover, her brother Jaime, but remains available for an alliance. One of two things can happen here, she is either wed to Rhaegar or Stannis. Either one makes Tywin happy though he goes back to Casterly Rock and tries to find a way to get a better heir than Tyrion, assuming Jaime is dead. In the years to follow, there are five Targaryens, Viserys, age five, Daenerys, newborn, Rhaenys, age two, Aegon Sr., newborn, and Aegon Jr., Jon Snow, newborn. A lot of things go differently in the years to follow. Jon Arryn and Rhaegar don't let the kingdom go to hell as Robert did. The Lannisters don't own the crown's debt. Ned Stark lives much as he does, mourning the death of his friend Robert, 
but it's no longer a secret that his cause was false and his sister wasn't abducted against her will. By the time John Arryn dies, there are five Targaryens to marry off for alliances. But where things get ugly is if Rhaegar dies. Aegon Sr. is his heir, unless a plague kills him and Jon Snow, in which case it passes to Viserys, whom we know will eventually go mad. That's a bad situation. So here's the other possibility. Suppose that the Lannister army does sack King's Landing and Elia Martell and her children die in the same ugly fashion as they did in history. With Robert dead, Stannis still becomes Lord of the Stormlands, but that's about it. Rhaegar knows that to continue fighting is suicide for his cause, but the Lannisters are no longer in that winning position. Jaime most certainly dies, and if there's a plan to keep the peace, it may require the sacrifice of Gregor Clegane and whoever was involved in the Red Keep. Tywin won't like that, and he'll be holding that grudge. The Martels will continue to hold their grudge. And Aegon, Jon Snow, is the heir, but in no way does Rhaegar marry Cersei. If Rhaegar and Jon die, the throne falls to Viserys, which is bad. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like this video and drop comments. And most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.